The expandable baton is a really good self-defense option. It's easy to carry and it doesn't cost a lot of money. In this video, we're gonna be diving into the subject of expandable batons and we're gonna be looking at one in particular from Police Magnum. Stick around. One thing we know for sure is that these things are fun to deploy, whether you take them out and intend to use them for self-defense or whether you walk around with one every day. They're just a nifty gadget. They kind of make you feel a little bit like a Jedi getting ready to wield the saber. But the first thing I want to say about an expandable baton like this is that it can be a non-lethal or lethal option depending upon how you use them. Typically, the expandable baton is designed to target the arms, the legs, and things like that. We get into deeper waters when we talk about targeting the head because these can kill. An effective head shot with an expandable baton can end someone's life. And how somebody decides to use one is gonna come down to the context of the situation, but we'll get more into that here a little bit later on. Let's take a look at the baton. I do believe this is around 21 inches. This is solid steel and it's got this rubber handle. These range from 24 to 28 bucks, a really good price for this. But here in the USA, you'll get free shipping on this and this is a USA company. Here's the nylon sheath that it comes with, attaches to the belt, very easy to carry and compact. The expandable baton is just one of many options out there available to you for self-defense, depending upon what type of items that you acclimate to based on what you're comfortable carrying and your level of experience. I like the expandable baton because it is a compact carry, but it expands and it gives you reach advantage. And in my opinion, could be a very effective defender against a knife. If someone was coming after me with a knife and I was trapped and I didn't have anywhere to go, the first thing I wanna do is put something in between me and that individual, whether it's a chair, or just something to create some distance and a wall of separation. An expandable baton demands distance unless you wanna get hit. Some people are crazy enough to take their chances, that's the real world, but it does demand distance and it can reach out and strike things like the hand. You know, something like this can reach out and touch real fast. I'll say one more thing with regards to being an advantage over a short weapon like a knife is that a lot of people you know, we'll, we'll typically default back to, well, I'm not worried about a knife wielding assailant because I carry a gun. And I've talked about this in the past. Yes, at a distance, if you have enough time, a gun is going to be superior. But in the real world, someone with a knife can travel at you very quickly. And a lot of people who carry guns are not efficient and trained enough to be able to even effectively draw and place a shot by the time the assailant is close enough to strike them. I'll even put out a challenge. Get you one of those little airsoft guns that don't really hurt if you get shot with it. And I have to say this because somebody will go back and use a CO2 gun. Don't use a CO2 gun for crying out loud. I'm talking about the toy airsoft that shoots the little hollow plastic pellets. Get you a face protector and get out with one of your friends, as I have done this countless times, and train that drill. Place your weapon however you would carry it, whether it's appendix carry or however you would carry it, and practice being able to pull that and take a shot before your friend can get to you with the training knife. I've done this drill with some of the people that I've trained with. It's a real eye-opening thing. You've got somebody who's carrying a pistol in a purse or carrying it somewhere and they don't train with it or they don't practice deploying it quickly and getting in position. Someone like that would be very surprised if some crazed maniac with a knife wanted to get to them. It's just a whole lot easier said than done when it comes to a firearm. Hope you didn't mind me going on that little rabbit trail. The expandable baton gives you the benefit of carrying a short stick without feeling like you're carrying a stick. And to close these things, you just have to bop them against a, a hard surface, whether it's a hard tree or just the concrete, just give it a little tap and it'll close. Just anything with a hard surface, that'll do it right there. Another benefit of the expandable baton is that it also is not as regulated as many things. I pulled this info from Google search, obviously subject to change. 
I don't like to make a lot of hardcore factual statements about what's legal and what's not legal. I like to provide just as much basic information as possible, stuff that's out there for everybody. And a lot of people interpret constitutional carry very differently. Some don't care at all about, you know, the state laws and some of these regulations with regards to these things, but I still like to talk about it for those who do care. Here's an example of how I think all of this is relevant. Let's just say that you have the choice between carrying an expandable baton or a pair of brass knuckles around with you. You may think to yourself, bro, I'll carry either one. I'll carry both of them. That's fine. That's, that's your business. But you know, to the person who wants to jump through less hoops, if something happens, if they know their state laws, they can make a choice based on that. And if they have to defend themselves, they may have less hoops to jump through. But these are decisions you have to make. One of the reasons why I like to cover so many different types of self-defense tools and options out there is because everybody's in different places. Not everybody can have access to the same stuff. Not everybody has the ability to carry the same things. We can't just throw out a blanket statement and say, get a firearm because not everybody's in that situation. So let's talk about non-lethal versus lethal. To me, I think this is one of the most difficult elements of the whole world of self-defense because if you can go non-lethal, you definitely want to go that route. It's a lot easier in the end. Someone harassing you in a non-life-threatening way might just get a shot to the legs, a shot to the kneecap, or a shot to the arms, the body, you know, as a warning. And they may or may not back up and decide to come in again. You have that same option. Someone with a knife and someone threatening your life may in fact get this. You just have to make that assessment. Where a lot of people get in trouble in self-defense is they don't match force with force. They'll, you know, take someone who's heckling them and kill them or, you know, shoot somebody who really didn't need to be shot. They'll take excessive force against an attack that may not have been lethal. Take someone who's just being a public nuisance, which I've encountered more than once in my life, and they just keep heckling you. Maybe they're drunk in public. You know, you might take a baton, you might give them a pop, you know, get them to back up, deal out a little pain, create some distance for you to get away. You take somebody like that who's not coming at you in a direct lethal way and you pull this thing out and you crack them over the head with it, they'll put you in prison. So that's how self-defense can backfire. Now let's go back to the use of the baton. One thing you get with this as a club is a lot of speed. Not all clubbing weapons are fast. For example, this is a lot faster than a bat. And you're going to need the element of speed because people have quick reaction time. The next thing you're going to need if you use a baton is you got to be committed. But that's the same with any kind of self-defense. Anybody doing self-defense in a state of hesitancy about everything is always going to be in a bad place. You got to be committed. Once you make the decision to defend yourself, you got to be fierce and you got to be committed. And your goal is to make contact at the right place because if you can connect with the side of the leg, if you can connect with a knee or anything like that, it's going to hurt. They might not show it at first, but it's gonna catch up to them within a matter of seconds, it's gonna hurt. If you telegraph to them what you're getting ready to do, they have time to move out of the way or prepare to absorb the shock. For example, if they see you coming for the leg, they may do this. They may get their leg out of the way and take away some of the impact. Hope you like that little dance move there. So it's like with any martial art, you gotta set up your shot. It's no different from the boxer that fakes that he's gonna go high with his jab and then he takes that jab to the body where he fakes high and then goes here. It's the same thing. Somebody might, might fake low, boom, and then go high. There's all kinds of trickery with regards to combat and setting up a good shot. For example, if I wanted to take the side of his leg or his knee, I'm not just gonna pull my baton and start coming in like this. That's letting him know what's coming. He can move out of the way and take action against you or even go after your, your weapon. But if I'm here, I might fake, I might fake this way. I might make a fake motion to get him to naturally put his hands up while his hands are up. It's a whole different story. You don't want to advertise what you're doing. Sometimes if you're in a deadly situation, you may fake here and go here just so that there's less preparation. There's all kinds of things that goes into using this. You can't just take it and go after them and swing. They're gonna see it, it won't work. It's the element of surprise that makes things like this work effectively. A fake here, a 
a shot here. And remember, there's no quick draws from the sheath with a baton. You have to take the baton out at the sign of trouble. The way you want to launch the baton is you want to launch it in a way that's going to have you in position to take the quickest swing. You don't want to flick it here and then swing. There's too much time involved with that. For example, I could push back and launch this way. Then I might pump fake and then come in like that. I can keep it in my hand. It's fairly concealed and I can still go back here with it. Another thing to remember is this also doesn't have to be fully ejected to take a swing. I can hold it like this and still hit. It will eject in the flight of swing. In a really bad situation where you had to take a head shot, it's the same thing. It just ejects. So there's options with regards to how this is ejected. You just won't speed. A while back, I talked about leather saps. You know, leather saps are highly regulated items. You know, it's one of those things where it's like 50-50 with regards to legality. Well, you know, this is formidable just like this. Even if it's not fully extended, this has got a lot of weight. And this too bang, bang, could be a heavy crashing object in and of itself. You could use the you know, blunt end of this thing, however you choose to use it or however you need to use it, depending upon how bad the situation is. Just remember as a universal rule, headshots with something heavy have to be a heavy situation. You have to have the highest reason for doing that. I love the expandable baton. It is a very versatile self-defense tool. There's so much more we could talk about, but we'll bring this to a conclusion and leave room in the comments section for more expertise, uh, more experience, comments that anyone feels the desire to make concerning the use of this self-defense tool. I think this one from Police Magnum is really great. It feels very sturdy. It's got a great price, and I'll drop a link in the description for you to pick it up. And again, I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially if we've got people uh, watching this video who have been in law enforcement, who have had to use these things for various situations and times. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Take care.